everyone, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I am absolutely delighted to be hosting an interview with one of my favorite wrestlers ever. It is Mickey James. Hello. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. I'm so excited to be on here. Like I told you, I've been, actually started following you, and I've watched your show grow, and I'm, it, it's amazing. It's so amazing. Thank you so much. It's always so surreal hearing things like that. I mean, before we were recording, uh, you were mentioning to me how even as the years go, hearing people compliment and say, hey, I loved you growing up, um, it still means so much. So on my end, knowing that you even know anything about me, um, that's a wonderful thing. So just thank oh. you so much for that. <laughs> of course, of course. I always say women have to empower other women. You have to lift other women up. If they're doing a fascinating things instead of like, we all as a human, we all get like jealousy and like it mostly, most times you would hope that would push you to push yourself a little harder. But some of us have like little green eyed monsters. That's it because we're not capable of pushing ourselves harder. We get a little jealous. So I like to lift other, other people that I admire up. So, you know, I love here's that. me to you. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah. As Right now, of course, um, there's a lot of craziness happening in the world. We've all been stuck in quarantine for quite some time. So how are things going on at home? I know uh, you always say you're a mom first. So how are things yeah. with the family going and uh, how's quarantine? Um, treated? You know, honestly, quarantine has not affected me, I guess. And I, I recognize that everyone's affected differently. You know, my brother-in-law, he was laid off of work. He was on fur furlough the whole time, you know, and uh, it's just been crazy for different people. But for me, um, I'm a Virgo, so I'm very much a hermit when I'm home. I'm like totally like in my little, when I come home, because we're so extroverted, I think, in, in, with our work and, and in front of the public eye that when I'm home, I'm totally like on quarantine anyway. I quarantine myself. So um, it's not really been, aside from Donovan, I will say because I've not been on the road, I've not gone back for commentating or anything. So I've just been enjoying the time at home with Donovan. Honestly, he starts school next year what however that works out so it's really my last like full year to be like all mom time all the time you know so i'm really trying to just embrace it until then unless we end up homeschooling which you know could be a thing i really don't know how that's gonna pan out but yeah no absolutely it's kind of crazy not knowing exactly how the future is going to be but regardless of what happens it is nice that you kind of have that rare downtime because when you're always on the road and Nick's always on the road, um, it must be kind of hard having that time where you can just have genuine family time. So what have you guys been up to together uh, during sure. all this? Um, we, well, they just reopened the pool here at that. We have a, you know, cause we are back and forth between Richmond and here in town and the, uh, and Nashville. So that the complex where we have a townhouse here in Nashville and they just reopened the pool not too long ago. Um, with social distancing they got like the chairs taped off i'm like I don't, okay maybe because it's chlorine in the pool i don't know um but it's been great because i'm trying to make sure that like, he donovan is so fearless like he'll just jump in does not care can't swim you know so we're making it a conscious effort to make sure he learns how to be able to swim without his floaties and his water wings on just in case you know i was always i grew up with a pool so um, at my grandparents. So I was always a strong swimmer. I learned how to swim at an early age like him. And I just think it's imperative for everyone to learn how to swim um, to some degree, you know, because it's, no. yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And that must just be so cute for you watching oh, yeah. him. Especially Every since it's something that you were really good at growing up. It's kind of something you're almost passing on. I, I'm, I'm not a parent, but I imagine that being something like super sure. special. But yeah, yeah, it's fun because he just loves it. And it's, it's, he's so loud at the pool. The other people, like any public pool, uh, public beach, I'm sure they're just like, I guess I remember too, like being the one without the child, but to hear the kids going like, oh my God, look at this cannonball. And you're just like, <laughs> you can I'm spot them from a mile away. Like, like, catch some rays. And it's, <laughs> yeah, he's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, rather, or not just only going to the pool has been keeping you busy because you now have Grown Ass Woman, a oh. brand new podcast, which has been super fun to watch. It's super laid back. You're really just shooting the breeze with two of your super good friends in the industry between Lisa and SoCal Val. So is this something you've wanted to do for a while or did it simply come out of uh, the times that we're in right now? Um, well, we haven't started the podcast. We're actually debating on whether we do a podcast form of the show. It's like a video series kind of thing. Um, 
I've, I've, I've talked to Lisa and Val separately about doing different things, about doing some type of show. Um, I think Val is such an amazing host. She's so good. And she really helps keep Lisa and I like in line and, and be able to keep everything moving. Cause that is like, she's just super talented at it. And then um, I just think our personalities really bounce off each other just so well. And the fact that we are from three different, like, not really eras, but three different parts of the business, even where we are in our careers, as Lisa's, you know, just retired last year from wrestling. And then I'm still in it kind of actively full time. Well, you know, right now, yeah. but, but at the same time, and Val is kind of out of it, but more, she just does more of the hosting side or she'll work with fight TV or different networks on the hosting side, but she doesn't do a whole lot in the wrestling wrestling world as far as managing or valeting anymore. Um, so it's interesting to see, uh, you know, all of our viewpoints from three different perspectives, but also of like the different types of girly girls and women, I should say that we are, because Val is very girly girl. And I kind of feel like I, I am girly girl, but then I'm also very tomboyish and Lisa's obviously very much the same, you know, so it's just, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I think I always wanted to do like a show, like some type of podcast show, whatever, but not in the vein of let's just talk about wrestling. Cause I feel like there's so many wrestling podcasts that, even now, but they're like, and there are really amazing, like stone cold and, and, you know, even Jericho, who was the first one to do it. Like, these are people who have, who have done so much in the industry where I feel like their opinion is so validated on every level that like, I'm like, I don't really know if I just want to give my entire opinion on wrestling all the time because, you know, it's being I done. Everybody would love my opinion. You know, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then I would also be forced to watch all the wrestling, all of it. And there's a lot, <laughs> but it's fun because I feel like you're opening people into your world. When you watch it, it feels like a slumber party. Uh, it's like, I literally just turn the screen on and just, you have the time you're even in like super cozy clothes. It just feels very uh, down to earth and genuine. I think that's what's relating to a lot of people as well. When yeah, it comes to, thank, well, that's kind of the vibe we're going for. We always do it mostly in our PJs or loungewear and it's not like ooh lingerie look at me it's more like what you would legit when you're going to a slumber party like that's kind of how we thought about the show is like we want to book it like Val used to do a show called pillow talk and it's very similar when we thought like oh that'd be fun because then we can get our girlfriends on we can drink wine or we can drink smoothies we can drink water whatever and sit around in our pjs and talk about real life stuff that you know obviously some stories from the road that may have happened on the road but just also real life experiences and talk and what we got going on in real life not our TV life all the time. Well, it's yeah. been fun to watch. And I know you're Thank only a few episodes in, so I'm excited to see what else comes out of it Thanks. for sure. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Now, before we start recording, something else that I had mentioned to you was how fantastic you looked in those bell bottoms. It's my favorite gear of yours. I love it. Um, so you're welcome. At the time, was there a specific reason that you went with that look? Because I can't really think of any other woman in wrestling who had that, aside from maybe Beth Phoenix. You both kind of had that same... Uh, gear that just looks so cool to me so right. um she had the one piece that one piece with the more exactly. of the boot flare right like, yes um at first yeah you know it was an old gear this is this is what happened is that when i was alexis lurie in ring of honor that i still have in hanging in my closet because i'm i don't i'm not a hoarder i just don't get rid of my stuff like i still have almost all my gear um throughout the years in different like phases packed in like suitcase crazy anyway um so that i used to wear that at ring of honor this bell bottomy gear and then as i was coming to tv and then i was transitioning out of that crazy psychotic character um and we had those i was wearing the skirts and stuff and i was like okay well they want me to go more baby face which i keep wearing the skirts but the skirts were a lot of commitment and i had to wear like four or five pair of boy shorts every single time and they all ended up you know yeah, <laughs> it, it was just a hot mess all the time, like every day. It didn't matter how much double sided tape I used, you know, <laughs> they were fun. They were cutesy. They were what? But I felt like they had fit that. And I was trying to think of a way to like, oh, maybe change up my character and freshen it up. So I'm more like baby face. So then, you know, anyway, so I went back and I was like, look, and I was like, oh, what about these bell bottom characters? Because all the girls are wearing shorts, kick pad covers, rhinestones with more kick pad covers, knee pad covers. It's all like it looked all the same kind of to me and I was like hey, what can I do that would be different that's kind of why I went with the skirts in the first place because I thought it would be unique and be different um and so I, was like, I found that you know I found my old 
ring of honor gear. And I was like, Oh my God, I want to do this. I can do this. Go back to these bell bottom flares. Nobody's doing that. And the bells I remembered even from then would always like accent everything I did, especially like the kicks, because it's almost like when our, I remember like that. that. Yeah. The flares, <laughs> the flares almost, you know, make it look even bigger. It was just cool. I thought it was cool and it was different and you know, and here we are still, yeah. I even brought back the bells again. Yeah. <laughs> All Is the there... bells and whistles. Love it. Is there any gear you look back on um, where sometimes obviously we love stuff that we did, but I also know even growing up, I went through phases and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that was something I did. So is there any gear you look back on where you're like, oh my gosh, I, I not necessarily regret it, but you're like, wow, right. that was a look. <laughs> that was a look. Uh, no, I don't think <sighs> you're lucky. <laughs> Um, you know, I did go through as I was trying to find this Alexis Lurie character for um, thing. There was this like little OVW phase I went through in this transition of being Alexis Lurie in um, wrestling gear, shorts, whatever. And I even had the little bell bottom me things at my knee pads down some of those. But going to I had these little skirts with and I started doing like this pippy, not pippy long stocking, like rainbow brighty. I was dyeing all these like little pieces of my hair, different colors. I think that I was trying to find myself in those moments where I'm like, how can I define myself, make it different, make it unique, but still like. So I was trying to create a character and I don't know what I was doing there. Like it was like red pieces, pink pieces, like all these little pieces. And the, that was a little bit of a mess. Um that cargo gear when I switched to wearing that cargo gear I remember that yep <laughs> I loved that gear that was the most expensive gear that I have several of those and when I had those made they were the most expensive because there was so much intricate detail that went into those gears but they were so hot like I was oh. with, they were so warm like I was heavy yeah. and like they I felt like in hindsight I'm like god they really they were stretchy so they didn't like limit my flexibility or anything it was, it was just, just I felt like they added like 10 pounds to me as I was like running the ropes and doing stuff. It was just yeah. uh, because of all the rhinestones and the denim and all that hindsight. Maybe it looked cute. Maybe people thought it looked cute. I thought it looked cute, but it was so heavy. <laughs> I can imagine the heavier it is, like the warmer you are in it. And you do so much in the ring, like you move so quickly. So I can only imagine just how hot you would get in it, too. That sounds very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So something we have to dive into, um, because we've covered a bit of the wrestling, is the music, because I not only interview wrestlers, but also musicians, so I'm so psyched that you happen to be oh, both. Thank um, you. Of course. When did you realize that you had such a wonderful voice? Was it when you were a lot younger, or did it come over time? Um, I don't know that I have a wonderful voice. Thank you. You're so sweet. I think it's a... a I hope that people, I, you know, I have a unique voice, maybe a unique sound and I get to what I've really been working on is my songwriting. And, and I think that's creatively where that songwriting and be able to tell stories and, and sing the stories that mean something to me. And so this next album that I'm trying to like create is all originals, like all stuff that I've written or co-written. Um, but, you know, I... I've always wanted to do it. You know, we say these things when we're young, like, and, and oh, I want to be a singer. I want to be an actress. I want to be a wrestler. I want to be all these things. And I think that I, you, I said that a lot. I just never thought it was something that I could do. You know, I never thought I was capable. I didn't think that I had a good voice. I didn't think that a girl out of Montpelier, Virginia was ever going to go be some famous singer somewhere. Like, I, you know, these are just like the things that you, whether it's their learned behaviors or learned, you know, thoughts or whatever, but um, it wasn't until I was on the road all the time that I was, I was writing and singing in my car, driving, you know, 300 miles to the next town. Um, that I was like, oh, but you know what? I always wanted to do this. And, and since I had accomplished so much in, in wrestling, I think I was like, oh, I've always wanted to do this. And it was only fear and that mentality of you're not good enough or you're, it's not possible for you that held me back from that. So that is what took me to Nashville and said, I'm going to take all these, you know, collection of songs that I wrote and I'm going to cut like at least maybe two or three of them just for myself, just so I can say that I did it. And that's just opened up a whole new world for me. I mean, I put out my first album 2010 um, and then got signed and put out my next album. Somebody's going to pay album and with uh, E1 Music Nashville. And now, you know, then I got, Fast forward after having Donovan, I've dropped, you know, a bunch of albums with SMG. And then just recently, um, I just made my own record label. Um, 
So That's I'm super huge. excited about that, of, to be able to release and do my own. And then hopefully, you know, people who are musicians and want those outlets to be able to provide a foundation or support system for them. So yeah, Firewater Records, legit. I'm so excited. So That's excited. a huge thing, having your yeah. own establishment like it's that. It's like a little big, I mean, it's to let's say, like, I'm not going to sit here and say it's Sony. It's not. It is, you know, my right. little baby record label. But, uh, you know, it was taken a lot of time and like learning of like the culture and, and how muse, the music industry has changed so much. And, and um, you don't, I mean, unless you have, I mean, obviously I don't have a million dollars to just sink into a single. So the chances of making it to top 40 radio, unless it's just a song that blows up for whatever reason is even the songs, you know, you go like these artists are, are doing so well and they have millions of views on YouTube, but are not signed to a record label, you know, and it doesn't mean that they're not successful and they're not touring and they're not doing all these things. So, yeah. Yeah, it's I just very, want to put out the music that I love and that, you know, that I want to hear and hopefully other people want to hear it too, so. And the coolest part is you not only get to champion your own tunes, but when you do find those little gems of people that you love, other singer songwriters, mm -hmm. it goes back to uplifting people and empowering them. You never know who you might end up signing and working with. Right. Like it's, it might be a start right now, but it can grow into something. It could grow um, into something beautiful and I would love yeah. that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, just to wrap things up, I was curious if you could have any band or artist write some entrance music for you, who Ooh. would you love to see do so? Oh, man, that's not fair at all. <laughs> you can name drop a couple. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say Randy Hauser. Okay. I think he could do like a, I love, you know, that my kind of country kind of, you know, I would, it would like, cause I would love to do hardcore country, but I would like to redo, revamp it. Like that would be cool to me and to have like somebody like that, or I, th that's, I love that song. I still play it. I mean, I know it's an older song, but it still makes me feel like a badass. So <laughs> um, maybe yeah, okay. I know people would say like, they would typically say like Metallica, which I love. Metallica. Right. You know what I mean? They say all these, but I'm like, mm, what, who would it be that would like really be able to define my character? And it would be like a Randy Hauser or a Reba. Reba could, yes. You know, something like <laughs> now that. Now you're getting that, into it. <laughs> that could like make me feel like a, you know, a badass country girl, you know, coming yeah. out to kick some butt. That would be cool. Right up your alley. <laughs> right up. <laughs> right up. <laughs> Well, I want to say a huge thank you for coming on here today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I'm so happy we were able to do this. Thank you, too. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. Anytime. Just call me. Now you got my number, so. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody, this has been the lovely Nikki James. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.